Hi, fourth and fifth graders. My name is Sabrina Kovacs, and I'm a teacher at Seattle Public Schools. I'm super excited to be able to bring some math content to you this week. In your packets, you will find activities for playing a game called Big Pig, Pig and Big Pig, and I'm not going to review that content. Instead, I'm going to talk about understanding tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. We will be writing fractions as decimals and decimals as fractions. Before we begin, you should have your packet in front of you, and it would be great if you looked over it before watching this video. If you'd like to work alongside the video and pause, then please grab your packet, grab a pencil, and any other supplies that you think you might need to get your math work done this week. Let's start with a really big idea before getting to our work. And that big idea is equivalency or equivalence, or what does it mean when two values are equivalent? Well, essentially, it means that they are equal. And what does equal mean? All of us know that this is the symbol for equality, for equals. But as you work on decimals and fractions, I want you to keep clear in your mind that what our equal sign actually means is that whatever is on one side of an equation, let's say four is on one side of an equation, that it has the same value as what's on the other side of the equation. And since we're in fourth and fifth grade, two plus two equaling four or four equaling two plus two, is not a difficult concept to understand. But I don't want you to only think that equals means the answer to. Sometimes we're just trying to think of answers, but when we're converting fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions, it's super important that we're always remembering that whatever we write on one side of the equation, it's going to have the same value as what's on the other side of the equation. When we're writing fractions as decimals or decimals as fractions, all we're doing is showing the same value in two different ways. If you look at the example on your screen, I have written four tenths as a fraction right here. And then I also wrote four tenths as a decimal right here. So this equation reads four tenths equals four tenths. Now, they have the same value, and you might ask yourself, why would we have two ways of writing the same value? And I want you to keep asking yourself that question as we move along in the lesson. You will see that sometimes it's better or easier or more appropriate to write a value as a fraction, and sometimes it's better or easier or more appropriate to write a, dec uh, to write a value as a decimal. And I want you to keep asking yourself that question as we move along in the lesson. Here is a little snippet of some of the problems in this week's packet. You'll recognize these uh, diagrams as pictures of base 10 blocks, which you've been using probably since kindergarten to further your understanding of many mathematical concepts. So we've got uh, a square that's been broken up into 10 equal parts, and some of the parts are shaded and some of the parts are not shaded. You've probably done this before and the directions asked you to write down the value of the shaded parts or the unshaded parts as fractions. But this time we want you to think about expressing the value of the shaded and unshaded parts as decimals. Now, the best way that I can describe the difference between fractions and decimals in terms of the way that they're written is if I write four tenths, for example, if you look at that fraction, there is no place value there. We don't have any digits in any place. I mean, if you only look at the 10, of course, you can say there's zero ones and one 10. But if you look at that whole fraction, four tenths, we don't have any place value. We just have a representation of a certain value. But if we write four tenths as a decimal, this actually is a representation of place value. 
I had to move because the people in my house are being really loud. I know you're probably dealing with similar problems when you're trying to focus on your lessons while we're going to school at home. Anyways, what you see here is a place value chart. You've seen them many times before. You're probably super familiar with them. And some of you probably have teachers who have shown place value charts in your classroom that include, that um, only include, let's say this part. So whole numbers, always starting with the ones and then going in this direction to show that numbers get larger. Some of you probably do have place value charts in your classroom that show the decimals, that show numbers getting smaller and go in this direction. This is something that I want you to stop and think about because it's actually more interesting and a little bit more um, complicated than you might think. And um, this is why. So if we're just thinking of the number one or the unit one or the value of one, the idea of this place value chart, the idea that we have in our base 10 number system is that we can always multiply by 10. We can always get 10 times bigger. And you know, this one only goes to hundreds, but we can go to thousands and 10,000s and hundred thousands and millions. And we can keep multiplying and multiplying and get numbers that are 10 times larger than the one that came before it. Well, that doesn't only go in one direction, it goes in both directions. We can divide by 10 and get numbers that are smaller and smaller and smaller, 10 times smaller each time. So that decimal, what that represents is the division between numbers getting 10 times larger and numbers getting 10 times smaller. Let me give you an example that you're all super familiar with, which is money. If something costs me $7.05, then this is how I write it. There are zero tenths and there are five hundredths. So it sounds like tens and hundredths, not tens and hundredths, but we've got that THS at the end. So you want to be um, careful when you're using math thematical terms and speaking math clearly. Now, if I have something that costs $7.50, then they both cost $7. Actually, let's forget about the seven because that's not super helpful right now. So I'm just gonna scratch that seven out. And right now we're just comparing five cents to 50 cents. Well, we know that five times 10 is 50. So 50 cents is 10 times more than 5 cents, or 5 cents is 10 times less than 50 cents. And that is a very good representation of how our place value system, when we're moving over to the right, our numbers, if we're just moving one digit over, are getting smaller and smaller, 10 times smaller. In your packet this week, you're being asked to express values as fractions and as decimals. And at the beginning of the lesson, I did ask you to think about when should I write a fraction or a value as a fraction and when should I write it as a decimal. So let's think of some examples. And we were just talking about money. So I'm gonna continue with the money example. Now, if something is $7.50, it's written like that. Has anyone ever gone to the store or shopped online and seen the price expressed as $7.50? No, we haven't. When we're talking about money, we're using decimals. And I want you to think about why that might be. Now, when we're measuring things, especially when we're using rulers, a lot of times, um, if I was measuring a room or I was measuring some fabric or how far I walked somewhere, sometimes we use decimals and sometimes we use fractions. The important thing to remember is that these two are equivalent, that they are different expressions of the same value. When you're comparing decimals, 
it's very helpful to use the place value chart to keep track of which digit is in what place. Similar to what you did when you were younger and you were learning how to compare numbers in the tens and hundreds. So you would draw something very similar, but this time, instead of ones, tens, and hundredths, you would start with tenths, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. So if I have to compare not I'm going to draw my decimals here. Uh, nine, I'm going to put a nine, a six, and a two right here. And then I'm going to put an eight, a seven, and a two right there. So don't forget, this is our decimals right here. My computer is not helping me right now. So this would be one, and this would be one. We're going to put one in the ones place. Here's the ones place. So which is larger, 1.962 or 1 and 962 thousandths or 1.872 or 1 and 872 thousandths? Well, in this example, we have 9 tenths and 8 tenths, and we know that 9 tenths is more than 8 tenths, so we know that this number is going to be larger than this number. But let's say that we've got the same number of tenths. Now we're comparing the tenths, it's the same number of tenths, so we have to look to the next place value and determine which one is more. We have six hundredths and seven hundredths. Well, we know that seven hundredths is more than six hundredths. And so we know that eight hundred and six, that 1.862 or 1 and 862 thousandths is less than 1 and 872 thousandths. I want you to think about how you would write this as a fraction. Along with using a place value chart, using number lines is really important when we're trying to understand the value of fractions and decimals. So in your packet, you do have a couple of tasks where you are being asked to show where a number is located on a number line. Now, I'm going to give you a different example, but um, let's say we have 4.1, and 4.2, and 4.3, and 4.4, and 4.5. Okay, so these can be read as 4.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0 0.5, but when we're practicing decimals, it's really important that you practice reading them as the values that they represent. So 4 and 1 tenth, 4 and 2 tenths, four and three tenths, four and four tenths, four and five tenths, or four and a half. Now you might wonder, well, what's going to be in between, right? What's going to be in between these fractions? Well, if you think about adding zeros to these, now what we've got We still have four and four tenths, four and five tenths, but we can think about it differently. We can think about four and ten hundredths, four and twenty hundredths, four and thirty hundredths, four and forty hundredths, four and fifty hundredths. So what do you think the intervals in between the tenths are? Take some time to think about that as you approach your work this week. So that just about wraps up our lesson. I hope I've given you some things to help you 
figure out how to express values as fractions and as decimals, and how to think about the difference between ten, tenths and hundredths and thousandths. Um, take a look at your packets. If you have any questions, feel free to email your teachers. But do take your time to try and figure some of this stuff out on your own before asking anyone else for help, because I know that all of you are capable of being great mathematicians, and all of you probably already are great mathematicians. So take good care of yourselves, take good care of your families. I hope you have some fun and enjoy the sun this week. Um, and I'll be seeing you soon, hopefully. Bye.